Welcome along to our Champions League post-match show. Good to have you with us tonight, Kate, Thierry, Jamie and Micah. What a smile from Micah Richards. Uh, listen, we've got a whole hour of a post-game here for you. We'll bring you all the reaction from the studio in London and also uh, live from Madrid as well. Um, I guess 1-1 one, one at the Bernabeu. Now you go back to the Etihad next week. How does that affect your confidence levels? Your confidence levels no, must no, be high. No, let's it's, it's not get to, he thinks they've won. No, no, no let's not get too excited because... I think Benzema is going to have a say in this tie. I think today was a little bit quiet. Jay mentioned Vinicius before the game. He turned up. The man Kevin De Bruyne turned up as well. So it's all to play for. All I'm saying is last season, it was at the Bernabeu, the second leg. This time, it's at the Etihad. And you think with a crowd, it'll give them the advantage. That's all. Okay. Will you still be nervous ahead of the of second course, leg? Of course, I'm still week? nervous now, yeah. Still nervous okay. watching that game. It was just, it was tense. Man City, I thought, were the better team. But... On transition, Real Madrid, you know, know how to get it done. So that's what I'm nervous of. You had raised some questions about Manchester City's away form before yeah. this game. What, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts on how they handled this game? They played, uh, I mentioned it earlier, a proper semi-final game that you play away from home back in the days where you try to... They have a different way of killing a game off City. They don't go in front of their box and wait. They make you run with the ball. They keep the ball. That's the best way to defend. If you keep the ball, you don't have to chase it. You have it. But I thought at the time, like away from home a lot this year, obviously you're playing against Madrid, they didn't create a lot, which they scored from outside of the box. Madrid scored from outside of the box. So that tells you that the defence and the organisation, whether you play high, up, up, really high, sorry, to defend, or, or low, defenders were on top of the strikers, but the midf midfielders, apart from Vinicius, because I'm talking about the position where he scored the goal, being inside or... Uh, winger coming in, shooting, it's very difficult to defend that. Although we can talk about how maybe Edison was suspicious on the goal, but you know, the mm -hmm. power of the strike wasn't also that easy. So a proper tie away from home, strong performance. Not so much the city way as we see it sometimes, but it was a strong performance. No, I agree with Thierry, and I think Pep Guardiola, uh, we always pigeonhole them as, as, as teams always play the same way. But I don't think they do at times. You know, the, the, the makeup of Manchester City's changed over the years in terms of the profile of player. And also, when you think of what they did when they went to Bayern Munich, now they had a lead from the first leg. And again, that was a performance that we think about, you know, teams that we played in. You go away from home and you try to hold on to that lead. Now, I know they went on to win the game, but it was almost about stopping Bayern Munich as much. I think towards the end of that game, once it went 1-1, I think Manchester City were happy with the 1-1. And again, it's probably not something that we associate with Manchester City or Pep Guardiola. Mm. But he's thinking, this is a great result. Let's get out of here. We're 1-1. I'm a big favourite going into the second leg. So, yeah, I, I think it was a really mature performance from, from Manchester City. We're not the best. But you, you don't have to be at your best in away games in European football. You need to make sure you're still in the tie by the time you go for the home leg. And that's where City are right now. So who's your money on next round? Oh, Man City. You think Man City will do it? Yeah, I think Man City are big favourites. I think if, if Real Madrid would have gone with the one goal lead, I think it would have been a 50-50 game. But now I think City are big favourites. All the pressure's on them. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> um, So let's take a look at that, that first goal by Vinicius. You called him before the game, I think, the most dangerous player that Real Madrid have. And that definitely rang true tonight. Yeah, and not just because of the goal. I think throughout the night, I think he was possibly the best player on the pitch tonight. Every time the ball came to him, he was really dangerous. And before the goal goes in, I mean, Manchester City had been in a lot of control, really. But mm. as we highlighted at half time, it's really good football, brave football from Real Madrid to play a 1 2, not far from their own box. But it's Kamavinga who, to be fair, was alongside Vinicius Jr. in terms of being the best player on the pitch. And we think about him going past players, but. I mean, that strike there, mm. and Thierry, I mean, listen, it what? doesn't go right in the top corner. The only, no. the only thing you can say for the goalkeeper is just the pace of the pass because he hits it so well. But I'm asking Thierry, but even further on my right shoulder is a man who I'm sure has got the answer. Oh. Rob Green. He hasn't got the answer either. Yes, guys, how are we doing? <laughs> it's, uh, it was an interesting... <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Yeah, I've got the answer. First and foremost, I would say that on that strike, you, it is the worst feeling in the world for a goalkeeper to be unsighted by a defender. We've got two defenders in the studio. I'll come back to you eventually about this. But the goal is 192 square feet in, in area. 
Edison is expected to cover all, almost all of this. The ball gets hit, I reckon, around between 50 and 60 miles an hour. As you can see, the strike, he's just unsighted. You look at his footing, and he's just got that right foot coming inwards, just a fraction. That time it takes for it to come inwards, that buys into his time into the dive. But first and foremost, it is a fantastic strike. And look at Diaz there. He's blocking the view of Edison and he's got his back completely turned to the ball. If a goalkeeper did that, you'd crucify him. Why as defenders, Jamie, America, you're looking at the ball, you're looking at the get hit by the ball. Don't turn your back. I turn around and say, actually, Ruben Diaz has more chance of blocking that than Edison as a saving it. Mm. The goalkeeper's union. <laughs> it's a fair question though, Michael, what's your response to that? Absolutely, always sticking together, you knew that. <laughs> no, I, I, I just think sometimes, now with this whole new handball rule as well, you're trying to get your, your arms out of the way and sometimes it can alter your body position. And if you actually look on, on the angle again, Rob, Edison's weight is going slightly to the left, so then it was hard for him to get to the right. If he stays still in the middle, he probably can go left and right. Is that fair? You're talking fractions of time and you're talking that moment there. You just you touched on it there, Michael. You just look at his right foot there and it's in the air. And it is just, we talk about the timing of the set and it's just that fraction of a second that the, it's in the air, that the ball's already traveling, it's already towards him. He hasn't seen it by, and as it goes past Diaz. He can't react in time. I'll tell you what's worse is that as a goalkeeper, you know you've just got that timing a fraction wrong. And sometimes you think, actually, I'm better off not diving for it, letting go in and going, oh, I didn't see it. Diaz has absolutely done me. I can't do anything about this. And everyone goes, oh, he's unsighted. Diving for it actually and being beaten is actually your own worst enemy at times. Rob Green, former England keeper, good to see you. Thank you so much. We will see you in Manchester next week for the return leg. We'll have Peter Schmeichel with us as well, by the way, so we'll have two keepers uh, on the team for that one. Uh, let's talk about the equaliser. Kevin De Bruyne, your man from the, your time with the Belgian national team. What a beautiful strike this one was I've to equalise. I've seen that ball be I've seen that goal, sorry, before, but against Brazil, same, same impact. And he has a way of letting the ball come across him to hit it. The way he hits the ball, is, is, it reminds me a bit of uh, Steven Gerrard, uh, Jamie. I mean, Gudogan is clever enough to see him lay the balls off. He almost invites him to strike it by the way he lay, laid the balls off. That's very important. First and foremost, he loses the ball there. Then Rodri does ever so well to keep it alive. OK, now they do City. Grealish is on the ball, ball comes back to Gundogan, and now, boom, Can you talk me through the technique, though? How does he manage to keep it down there? It's, it's, Rivaldo used to strike the ball like that. Once you go across it, you need to let that left leg go up to, to, to go with it. Like a, know, sort of like a golf swing. Rivaldo used to do the same thing, it's almost, yeah. His two feet are off the ground now. It's, it's, it's like crazy. When Micah took that penalty, you remember it's, when Micah yeah, took that penalty? Yeah, when Micah took all of his body, everything was gone. <laughs> Why are you bringing it back to me, yeah. Kate? <laughs> but look at, if, if we show it again, if, if we show it again, it's very important. Look at the balance, how his body is straight. Look, although his legs are going to go all over, all over the place, look at his body. His body is strong, never moves. You see his name, you see his number all the way. Wow. All the way. Rivaldo used to do the same thing. I never used to understand that. He used to hit the ball and his two legs used to go over. Kevin. Can he teach that though or not? Is that just a natural ability? No, no, you can. You, you, you can learn. You can learn that. Everything is possible. Everything is, is doable. But I'm very happy for Kevin because you saw in the celebration, when you, you can see again the, the, the balance. It's like, it's like, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. Really? I There's mean, nothing you can say. He, but the, sorry, Jim, I, I just wanted to say him. that the way he celebrated, at one point you will see, it, it, you can see here now, you see? The way he goes, he almost, almost in tears because as you said, it was important for him today. It was important for City, don't get me wrong. But if you want to go and pass the Bernardo Sil uh, the David Silva, sorry, the Aguero Yaya and, and Yaya Toure and company, if he manages to bring this team to win a treble, to win the Champions League, 
it's over. Resilience and courage you've got to show when you come into a stadium like this. The hostility from the home fans, managing that, managing this environment is huge. They came in the first half, dominated, absolutely dominated possession and got sucker punch. But then the, the game flipped in the second half. When they scored, they were the team that were on the back foot. So it shows you possession isn't what it's all about. It doesn't have to be all possession. You've just got to be clinical in the right moments. And they were today. De Bruyne and Vinicius with two great strikes. Definitely worthy of winning any game. But this ended up a draw. Both teams, I think, be satisfied. All to play for in the next one. Yeah, obviously, disappointing overall. But over the grand scheme of things, you come to the Bernabeu 14 times Are you champion. disappointed? Obviously, because you come with optimism that you're going to win and score more than one goal. But again, before the game, you, you would have took 1-1 one, one at the Bernabeu. But over the course of the tie, you expect City to score a few more goals, hopefully, and then, and then go through. But listen, this is an intense place and an intense atmosphere. So credit to the boys. You're, you're playing against the history here as well. Yeah. It ain't just the players, these players here. You're playing against the history. Again, we talked about it, the full team trophies. You look in their, in their dugout, Carlo Ancelotti, he's got four as a manager, four Champions League winners medals. They know how to navigate every moment during these type of games because they're, they're so used to it. You're playing against so much and I think this, this City team have to be, you've got to hold them up and say, you know what, they came here and the way that they performed in terms of character, take, take on the ball, the bravery to take the ball the way they did. I think that was a phenomenal stance and the, for the first game, I think they can come away with this with their head well held high. I also think it tells its own story that, you know, Carl Walker and John Stones are happy to come over, shake hands. You know, you don't do that if you're disappointed with a nice work, actually, do you? Yeah, I think they'll be reasonably relieved, Man City, in the end. As I say, I thought they were very, very good in the first half and they'll take that away, you know, with them as a positive. But second half, I thought Madrid really started turning the screw and I think they'll be pleased to get off there today with a draw. The way the game just panned out in the end, tactically, it felt like Pep Guardiola had the upper end first half. It switched in the second half. And the 1-1 draw going back to Manchester is probably something they're quite relieved to have, I think, now. It's the same old Real Madrid this evening, isn't it? Doing what they do so well. Manchester City have played their part. They've played really well, yet it's Real Madrid who lead. Yeah, and, and I have to say, I've been sitting up here, I've marvelled at the, the, the composure, the, the bravery, um, how they just sit and wait, this team, this uh, Real Madrid team. They've, they, you look at the um, City team, they've come here, they've absolutely battered them possession-wise. But that counts for nothing. They're sitting, they're composed, they're waiting, they concentrate. And that minute comes for them to jump and pounce. And, be, and the, the clinical element of this team, it just speaks for itself. Modric here comes with the ball, beats the press. Jolian mentioned how, what a player is in terms of beating that press around the corner. And then from this point on, Vinicius Jr., I mean, I was going bananas in there. This was crazy. Yeah, obviously, when Camavinga's running forward, that's why Bernardo Silva's in the team, to, to nullify that threat. That hasn't been the case. And... It's a great finish. There are a lot of numbers back for City. Can someone engage slightly earlier? But so you can't take nothing away from that finish. We've got no change out of Kyle Walker out wide for a long period of time, Jake. And then he's come inside and mm. he's actually uh, he's actually done well, created a right bit of magic. I mean, when they pass the ball into Modric, not many teams would do that. He was marked. He had nothing on. The confidence they've got in each other, both teams that is, even when they're marked, they're, they're happy to give it to great players because they know they'll pull something out of the bag. And that little flick from Modric basically beat the Manchester City press and all of a sudden they're this, on the back This foot. is a high level game. You've yeah, got one cool. team com complete possession, they're creating shapes on the pitch, asking questions all over the pitch. And then you've got another team that are just a composed, sitting there and waiting. No one jumping out and coming out from the shape. And then when they get their moments, they go. And as, as I said, how clinical they were in, this, in this, that phase of play there. This is a team of just killers in this team. They smell the blood. The key for City is to keep on asking those questions that Rio mentioned. They need to deal with the opposition, deal with the stadium, deal with the scoreline. And just remember, you're only a quarter of the way through this. Yeah, I don't think City will be panicking. They'll be pleased with how they played in the first half. Yes, the goal was disappointing to concede like that. But overall, they've, they've created chances. They've got forward. I think they need to, to drive past defenders or try to drive past defenders a little bit more. I think everything's coming inside. It makes it a little bit more predictable and allows Real Madrid to recover. But if they look to just get Bernardo Silva 1v1 a little bit more and say, go past him or try to go past him and use the threat of Kyle Walker because Vinicius isn't tracking back. He's not tracking back. They can double up on that right-hand side. I would not be disappointed if I was back Guardiola. Yes, with the scoreline. But that first half hour, I was marvelling up here. You get a great view up, up here. <laughs> and tactically, I mean, I thought Pep Guardiola had the, had the advantage tactically. But of course, goals are the most important thing and the, the behind, but no panic, as you say, only quarter of the way through. A stadium every football fan should visit should he or she get the chance. The Santiago Bernabeu here in Madrid. My name is Derek Ray. With me in the commentary box is Arsenal legend Lee Dixon.
and getting ready for what should be potentially thrilling action here. It's Real Madrid facing Manchester City. Well, thank you, Derek. All the talking is done. Time now to put the coach's plans into action. Let's hope both teams really have a go at each other from the start of this match. It should be a cracker. Course. Here's Modric. And let's dissect the Real Madrid side. Thibaut Courtois begins in goal. Rafael Varane plays with Sergio Ramos at the back. Tony Kroos starts with Casemiro in the centre of the pitch. Can he give them the lead? And a goal! And the match back in business, Real Madrid with the advantage. Modric. The pass could do damage. Opportunity here. And it goes! Well, the goal again, albeit from a different angle. So, 2-0 now. Benzema. He's got the right idea with that pass. Vinicius Jr. It could be up for grabs. Corner given to Real Madrid. And fired over by Kroos. Real Madrid.